Praise be Jesus Christ! My dear lovers of the Word of God, welcome to Unpin Him. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, and the Gospel tells us to prepare the way of the Lord. Monsignor Rex Ramirez is here to share his reflection for our preparation, and let us listen to him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his, his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord Last Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, we heard already about preparing the way of the Lord. St. Paul himself then reminded us that it is now time to stay awake, to awake from sleep. And so today we are once again reminded about preparations being made, not only by the church, but also preparations that we should be making in our hearts for ourselves. When I think about preparation, I also think about the time when no preparation was needed. When God created the world, the heavens and the earth, there was no preparation needed. He created out of nothing freely without anyone or anything needing to be prepared. And so when I think about it, and I think of the preparation that we are doing now, <clears throat> I consider this a, an important difference. When God works out the salvation of man, He wants man to be fully prepared. We know that preparation is important and we know that the more important an event is, the more preparations will be needed. And so, this is for, for us also, I think, true. The Church prepares for four Sundays, about roughly four weeks, for the celebration of the birth of the Lord. But this short time of preparation encompasses all the preparations and reminds us about the preparations that God had been, has been doing since the beginning of the fall of man, when God 
began the process of man's salvation. So we heard, for example, from the readings about the prophets, preparations already done by the Lord in word and in deed. And in these times, we are now reminded once again about John the Baptist. See, when God wants us to be prepared, He gives us a lot of time, centuries. And He gives us persons who are trustworthy in their testimony. It seems that God does not really want to fail us. And so, He gives us ample time, reputable persons, and ways in which we are able to prepare ourselves. So, this is what the Church really remembers during Advent. That all our life and the history of the world is preparation for the coming of the Lord Jesus. This is how we are supposed to live our lives, always with that thought. Someone is coming. No one is more important than he is. John reminded us of that. Mightier than himself. Mightier than anyone. If the President of the Philippines is coming, we would certainly prepare. Well, we even prepare for um, famous personalities less than the President. For the coming of the Holy Father in Leyte, we prepared for a long time. So God, it seems, understands human nature. He knows that we need to be prepared. And so today, we are given a, the person of St. John, John the Baptist. And we look at him and we understand just how serious God is in preparing us very well. It's not only the person of John, it's also what he says. He says, repent. Give good fruits of your repentance. Show that you truly are repentant. Change your ways. Every year, we hear these words, and I wonder how seriously we take them. And it's not only what he says, it's what he does. Remember how St. Matthew describes John, his clothing, his diet, everything. His whole life is used as a preparation, not for himself. And this is how God wishes us to be prepared by using the most serious of persons, prophets, for example, Moses, people who practically spend all their lives whose lives are already dedicated to help us prepare. As I said, this is how we come to understand just how serious the coming of Jesus is. With the time that God allots for it. And this is also how seriously He desires our salvation. I think many people still miss the point. The coming of the Lord Jesus has been planned by the Lord Himself for a very long time. This is what, as I said, we remember during these days. But the time that the Lord gives us seems not to be taken seriously. Every year, we come back to the same story. During these four weeks, we will hear again and again the word of the Lord reminding us of how important it is for us to be prepared. I suppose it is now time for us also to respond, as St. John would say, to show good fruit, to bear good fruit as a sign of our repentance. We know that hardened hearts and deafened ears and blind eyes do not respond well, no matter how long a speech is said, no matter how much a person dedicates his life, no matter the length of time that the Lord Himself gives to us in order to prepare ourselves, 
no matter all these things. If we do not respond, this will all be useless. And so today we ask the Lord for the grace to truly awake, awake ourselves from sleep. Sleeping, we cannot hear. We will never be able to understand. And I think even that, for that, the Lord also has provided us with a great many helps. This time, as the Christmas season approaches, we have many preparations. I fear that our preparations are not for the coming of the Lord. They are not even for the celebration of His birth. I fear that our preparations are all for this world. They will be useless for us. And certainly this is not what God wants us to do. And so we pray that the Lord himself may inspire us, enlighten our, our minds, open our hearts so that this moment, these days, these weeks of preparation may bring us to give better fruit than ever before. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Monsignor Rex, for the reminder that we have to stay awake. To be always ready. It is true that God began His divine concern of saving us from the moment He was disobeyed by His beloved creation. Our first parents. His preparation then and now does not change, and He continues to prepare us for His coming. Do we cooperate in this loving redemption? The greatest among the great is coming. The most important among all importance is dawning. In case we have not changed our ways yet, do it now. As Monsignor Rex said, an ample time has been given to us. Who knows? This is the D-Day. Today is the day that has been preparing for us. Are we ready? Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for always with us in this reflection as we continue to bring you God's message of salvation. And may the Word of God grow in our minds, in our will, and in our heart. Enjoy your observance of Advent. Consecrated life is not a choice. It is God's gift. Receive God's gift now. Answer His call. Pokemon Go trainers, try to go for God. Pokemon Badge is fictional. Jesus' badge is eternal. In response to the love of God, who has called me to follow more closely, Christ of the Master, way and truth and life, among the daughters of St. Paul,
consecrated by him in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. I recommit myself to live in communion with my sisters and to be faithful to the charism of the Founder, dedicating myself in the Church to evangelization with the means of social communication.